light of the world, in grace and beauty, mirror of God's eternal face, transparent flame of love's free duty, you bring salvation to our human race. Sacred mystery, we light the fourth candle of Advent for peace and promise. We kindle it with peace. We await the coming of Christ, who proclaims your kingdom come. Sacred mystery, you are the prime mover in our lives. We ask that in these days of preparation, you would inspire us to proclaim, by word and example, your dream of your beloved community. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen.
And now we gather our hearts in the collecting prayer or the collect for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in the house of cedar, but the ark of God says in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took from you the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth 
in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From the openness of my heart, I offer these words in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today, in the fourth Sunday of Advent, it is all about Mary. It is our wonderful, familiar story of what we call the Annunciation, or the inbreaking of God's holy reign in a brand new way, because Mary was able to say yes to God. And in order for Mary to say yes to God, to be receptive, to hear, or to sense, or understand this radiance that came upon her, we know that Mary must have been hallowed out or open or receptive to God's presence and God's request. Not all of us are that all of the time. There are times when we are closed up, when we no longer attend to the permeability, the reciprocity in our relationship with God. There are times when we say, I just don't want to do it, or I'm too busy to even think about it or probably more often I hear, I'm too afraid to. Because like Mary, God has asked each one of us to do something big, to bring in the kingdom of God. Because during Jesus's life, death, resurrection, and ascension, our redemption has been taken care of for us. There is an inbreaking of love in this world now that could never have been imagined had it not been for the resurrection of Jesus. And so we, our work now is how do we love, live into it and how do we love into it is really how best to look at that. And so I want us to explore for just a moment this sense of relationship. You know, in our first reading from Samuel, there was this conversation about I need to build God a house, a house made out of cedars. And, you know, so there's often this sense that because we feel graced and feel because we feel blessed, we want to give back so that God is often providing to us and we may want to provide to God. And so there's this wonderful sense of attending to a relationship where we receive from and we offer to or we provide. So often it goes like this, you know, God loves us, therefore we can love God. Or God loves us and therefore we can love each other. Or God showers us with blessings and therefore we can shower other people with blessings. And our praise and our thanksgiving and our songs, the joyful ones like the Magnificat of Mary's song of joy, that is often a way that we are providing blessing to God. So we talk about this relationship, this give and take, this openness on all parts to be able to live into a real relationship. And so maybe it's Mary and maybe it's the Annunciation and maybe it's the idea of a womb, but I was really drawn as I was thinking about our story today to this globe that my sister gave me. And I don't really quite remember where she got it or the story behind it, except that I know it's hand blown glass and it's covered with like tissue paper and it has these wonderful designs and I had to purposely find a place today inside that isn't flooded by light. Uh, but anyway, so you may not be able to see it, but when you look in it, you can kind of see that there might be a light inside. And so if we look at this as our soul and we think about that light that is inside, of course, that's the light of Christ. That's the spark that makes our life worth living. And so, but sometimes we can imagine because we're so busy or we're so distraught or we're so whatever, that this area at top is closed and we can't see then so much the light that comes can come out or even the light that is within. It actually can grow dimmer the less we pay attention to it. 
And so if we really attend to this relationship and we draw it like this so that we can see there's this wide opening, this, this area where we can see the love and light passing through so that God can provide for us. We can receive the grace, but that we can also shine that grace out into the world. So I think there's something really beautiful about this, about how we need to and what our spiritual work is to really hallow ourselves or make hollow, that we often have to get rid of stuff within us in order to be able to be filled up with God. You know, some of us have been talking and talking about Christmas and how different, of course, it is this year. And in some ways, it is more meaningful. In some ways, it is simpler. It is less chaotic, less demanding, less commercial, and more about settling into the presence. So I want to tell you about what spiritual practice is actually hallowing me out, is making room within me this Advent. We had a clergy call with our uh, bishop today, and she said to us, so how are you praying? What are you, how are you praying? What are you doing? How is this working for you? And what I realized yesterday, it was this marvelous revelation, and I don't know that I exactly had the words right yet to talk about it with you, but what I was very clear of is that this, unlike other Christmases, the Christmas blessings, the gifts of joy and grace and just a solid sense of awe have been unfolding to me through Advent. So whereas I would often wait until the big day of Christmas and we'd have our Christmas Eve service and my family would arrive and everything was packaged up tightly together in 24 hours, this way, because I've experienced it partly by making the videos and preparing for sending things out to our children, I have seen the blessing of so many of you offering so much, whether it is your voice that you are offering to us in our 12 carols of Christmas or these beautiful, most glittered stars I've ever seen in all my life that Aiden did for us so that the children who receive our Christmas boxes will have a beautiful star to put on top of their own manger or their own tree. I've seen people step up to help out with the Head Start family. I've, over and over and over again, I see people stretching and giving and hallowing out of whatever else might have preoccupied their lives to say this, this is what actually matters. And every time I see one of your blessings of kindness and generosity and hopefulness, it hallows out in me a space to receive God ever more deeply. And with each time I receive God ever more deeply and my yes gets expanded and grows into something marvelous, I know that I too am providing to God by opening this space for God's love to break out. And so as we hold Mary in our hearts this week, as we think about this relationship of what we will receive as we celebrate Christmas and what needs to happen within us so we can receive it in a way ever more fully, I pray that you will you will live into those moments and find your own blessings or your own prayer life as you walk through this last week preparing for the inbreaking of love all over again in our hearts. May Christ be with you now and always. The Prayers of the People Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
May the God of mystery, who dwells in unapproachable light, draws us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power, so that we may give birth to a Christ from the womb of our community or for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in all persons by Christ's saving work be brought to its fullness by our Saviour. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we remember before God all who are in any need and who cry for the presence of God, especially those who have been exposed to or have been infected with the coronavirus, and those who have asked for our prayers. Ellen, Dina, Patrick, Richard, Lloyd Spooner, and Andrew Shabbat, Jack and Linda Horner, Dick Weller and his family, Ashley Mann, Chris, Rebecca, Jonathan, Pierre, Sassy, Tony Yankowski, Janet, Melissa, Catherine, Kathy, Deb, Cameron, Jan McCrory, Emma Jean Bankson, Shirley and Robert Glick, Chuck Bloom, Richard, Evan, Roseanne, Jack, Kathleen, Amy, Tabitha, the Williams family, Alice, Samantha, Wanda, Margaret, Brian Rotts, Brian Hellman, Rachel Mooney, Stan and Dottie, and those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, Pierre and Sassy, Laura, Christina, David, Jonathan and Joseph, Laura and Pat, Diana, Kathy, Janine, Ellen, Fred, Tom, Susan, Connor and Matthew, Blake and Catherine, and those whom we name either silently in our hearts or aloud. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all the peoples of the world through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And now I invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and offering and a sacrifice to God. And now we join our hearts together in the Holy Eucharist for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son 
to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh in Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate by the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and have made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from our creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. The fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of creation, the head of our church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. 
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. to join with me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. Our, Our Jesus, we believe, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. Of the altar. We, we desire, desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim your resurrection. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now we receive God's blessing upon us during this Advent season. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. And may he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. And may you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.